Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome to your Charge Blade Weapon Workshop for Monster Hunter Rise. Weapon Workshops are our definitive guides to all the weapons, going over everything you could possibly want to know, starting with the basic behaviour and the moves, all the way up to the lesser known techniques, recommended combos, armour skills, combat strategies and more. Essentially, everything you could possibly want to know about your chosen weapon so that you can confidently take down whatever monster stands in your way. If you guys do enjoy this video and you do find it helpful, a like would be super appreciated. A ton of work and research goes into each and every one of these, so if you like them, let me know down below and share them with your friends if they're trying to pick up a new weapon. You can also find a link to the full playlist down below. We'll be covering all 14 weapons, so keep it locked as they get added. Now, let's talk about the Charge Blade, Monster Hunter's most technical weapon. This thing should come with a user manual. Oh wait, that's what this video is for. But all jokes aside, the Charge Blade is a fantastic weapon. It is both a sword and shield, and an axe, the transformer of weapons, seamlessly going from one mode to the next whilst dishing out incredible damage. The sword and shield mode offers great mobility and great defensive options, meanwhile the axe portion provides you with great damage potential, high and far reaching attacks, and depending on the type of Charge Blade you choose, great elemental or impact damage outputs, meaning you can really tailor this to suit your playstyle. The reason the Charge Blade is referred to as the most technical weapon isn't really because it's hugely complex to use. In fact, when you understand the core concepts, it's really no more difficult than any other weapon. The reason it's referred to as technical is because there are a few different elements you have to juggle, and it's important you understand these before we start speaking about the moves. I'll cover the specifics on how you actually perform these actions very soon, but for now, let's just break down the flow. By default, you will draw into your sword and shield mode, and any attack performed whilst in this mode will begin to charge these files. This is denoted by the little line of bottles, or files, at the top of the screen. First they glow yellow, then they glow red, and if you continue to attack, eventually they glow bright red. Now this is something you want to avoid, since being in this last state will actually see your attacks bounce. Ideally, you charge them until they are red, and then you need to store them, like so. Again, we'll cover how you do this very shortly. It is worth noting, however, that typically, if you store them from yellow, you will fill half your files, and if storing them from red, you will fill them all. Although, in Rise, if you have the Load Shells Armor skill, you can actually charge max from yellow, but again, more on that later. Once they're stored, you can either transform into Axe Mode, and your A attacks will then consume these files to deal file damage. Alternatively, you can transfer them into your shield, like so. Doing this boosts not only your shield's defense, putting the shield essentially on par with that of the lance or the gun lance, but this state will also boost your damage of your axe attacks. So this is an absolute must for this weapon. You always want to keep your shield charged. However, with your shield charged, you now have two more options. Continuing to attack in sword mode will allow you to charge more files and store them, so that you can then have both a charged shield and full of files, allowing you to perform one of the charge blade's most powerful attacks, the Ultra Element Discharge. This consumes all files, so the more you have stored, the greater the damage. It's also worth noting that the resulting explosion that comes out of this, the file explosion, is dependent on the type of charge blade you have. See, charge blades are either impact type, which, surprise surprise, deal impact damage, meaning these attacks can KO the monster, or you have elemental charge blades, which deal element damage relative to that type. Impact file explosions from the Ultra Element Discharge typically come out in a line, Meanwhile, element explosions fan out much wider, so keep this in mind when crafting your charge blade and also using it in combat. However, you also have another option, and depending on the switch skill you have selected, this will vary. By default, if you perform this action, which is a similar action to when you charge your shield, you can instead charge your sword. This requires shield charge to do, but doing so will imbue your sword attacks with file damage and prevent your attacks from bouncing, even if you have the glowing files, which I mentioned earlier that you typically want to avoid. Still avoid them, but just keep this in mind. 
Alternatively, if you have the other switch skill selected, you can instead switch into the Spinning Slash, reminiscent of the Savage Axe Slash from Iceborne. You'll notice in this stance that the sword icon has now changed to an axe, and now you can hold down your inputs during your attacks to spin the blade like a buzzsaw. This does great damage, ticks for a lot, so it has some great raw and elemental application, and furthermore, your axe attacks, for the first time ever, can also slowly build files, which is handy since it allows you to remain in axe mode for much longer. So in essence, and to recap what we just covered in a few simple steps, the general flow for this weapon is to attack to charge your files, then store those files, use these to charge your shield, and now you are primed for combat, during which point you can continue to build more files, charge your sword, switch into spinning slash, or dish out other devastating attacks. But successful use of this weapon will revolve around keeping those files topped up and your shield charged at all times. Thankfully, we also have some Siltbind moves that can make that even easier, which we'll go over next. Outside of that, the Charge Blade also has access to some great defensive options known as Guard Points. These are essentially moments during select attack animations where your shield is presented in front of you, and if you're hit, you'll guard mid-animation, allowing you to then follow up into powerful attacks. But again, I'll go over this in much greater detail shortly. For now, that's just a few things to keep in mind and the core concepts for this weapon. Don't let the seemingly complex nature put you off, because once mastered, the Charge Blade is incredibly satisfying to use. Now, before we dive in and cover all of your available moves, it's first important to talk about your available switch skills, since these will alter your combos and playstyle. Switch skills are a new mechanic in Monster Hunter Rise that allows you to swap out select moves and silk binds for your weapon to create your own personalised hunting style. Each weapon has three slots, and each slot has three skills to choose from. There is no right or wrong choice here, however, some skills do align better with certain playstyles, so it's important to understand their uses. I'll offer some suggestions a little later in this video. For Charge Blade, in the first slot, by default, you have the Condensed Element Slash. If you've played Monster Hunter World, you'll be familiar with this, but if you haven't, then provided you have at least a Charge Shield, you can then perform this action. Similar to the action where you store your files, only with an added input, it allows you to then also charge your sword. Again, we'll go over the actual button inputs for this later, but for now, let's just focus on the functionality. With this complete, your sword now glows, like your shield, and in this state, your sword attacks now gain file damage too. So if you have an impact charge blade, then on top of your base sword attacks, you get a burst of impact damage. And if you have an elemental charge blade, then you get that instead. This does of course mean, impact specifically, your sword attacks can now KO, which is handy. Furthermore, whilst charged, your sword attacks won't bounce, either on hard parts of the monster, or if you overcharge your files, that thing I said never to do before. With this charge, you can now be a bit more reckless, it's a really nice move, and if you spend a lot of time in sword and shield mode, it's some nice added damage. However, your alternate option is the Condensed Spinning Slash. This is accessed the same way, off the back of the file storing animation and then holding X. You can also get into this quickly if you have Counter Peak Performance selected, which we'll speak about soon, and following this you can then press X. But in this stance, you'll notice the sword icon has changed to an axe icon, and now in axe mode you have something that is very reminiscent of Savage Axe Slash from Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Your axe attacks now have an added buzzsaw-like component to them, where the head spins for more ticks of damage. Furthermore, if you hold down the attack input button, be that X or A, you get even more spins, and more spins is more damage. But it gets better still. For the first time ever, Axe Mode can now also generate files. Not as fast as Sword, but enough so that you can essentially keep looping Axe attacks indefinitely, which is nuts. Both your X and your A attacks build files, so you can use both. Of course, with the Charged Shield, your Axe attacks also deal more damage, and with Files, your A attacks also dish out File damage, so this is quite a potent combo. Switching back to Sword Mode will exit this stance, but all while you remain an Axe, you can keep this active. Then moving on from there, in your second slot, by default you have Morph Slash, a staple move for this weapon. In Sword and Shield, it's performed with ZR plus X, and in Axe Mode, it's simply performed by pressing ZR alone. This animation not only switches between your two different modes, but it also gives you access to two of your guard points. I'll be listing out all the available guard points later, but for the purposes of this section, in Sword and Shield mode, you have a guard point right at the beginning of the Morph Slash from Sword and Shield mode to Axe mode. Meanwhile in Axe mode, your guard point is at the end of the animation, so timing-wise they are quite different. One is fast, one is slow. But do keep in mind the default Morph Slash is fast, even faster with Rapid Morph, a skill that I'll explain later. Your alternate option for slot 2 is Counter Morph Slash. Input wise, this is the same, 
a morph from Sword and Shield to Axe mode, and from Axe to Sword and Shield mode. By default, this is however a little slower. In Sword and Shield mode, there's a longer pause at the start, giving you a greater window to guard points, which is handy. But the real game changer here is from Axe mode to Sword mode. Remember before, the guard point was at the end? Well, now it's right at the beginning, which makes it a lot safer to be in Axe mode, since you have a very quick guard point. This synergizes very nicely with the condensed spinning slash. However, there's more. A move we'll touch on a little bit later, but a powerful one for the Charge Blade is the Amped Element Discharge and the Ultra Element Discharge, formerly known as the Super Amped Element Discharge. You can perform this a number of ways. However, specific to this move is that if you perform an Element Discharge following a counter off of a guard point, the resulting file explosions are more powerful. This is kind of obvious from the name, but the Switch skill really wants you to be leaning into the guard point playstyle to truly get the most out of your Element Discharges. Then finally, in your third slot, you have your Silkbind moves. Your default offering is counter peak performance. This costs one wire bug to use and has a medium recharge rate. And when activated, you assume this defensive stance. If you are hit during this, a number of cool things happen. Firstly, your files are automatically filled, which is huge. However, much like off the back of a guard point, you can also follow this into a few different options. Pressing X following this will perform either the Condensed Element Slash or the Condensed Spinning Slash, making this a very quick way to get into either mode. Just remember, Condensed Element Slash requires Shield Charge to charge the sword, meanwhile Spinning Slash does not. Alternatively, you can press A to switch quickly into Axe mode, or you can press X plus A for an Ultra Element Discharge. So not only is this a last minute counter, and will protect you from taking damage, but it's also a very quick pathway to some powerful attacks and to filling your files. Do however keep in mind that one of the main differences for this is that after the initial block you are still vulnerable. Meanwhile if you were to guard point there are situations where you can get a couple of guards back to back. So while this is reactive, is fast and is convenient, it is not 100% safe. However your alternate option is just incredibly stylish. This is basically a devil may cry move and that is the axe hopper. This also costs only one wire bug and has a medium recharge. And this is the badass move from the trailers. You slam your axe down, launch yourself into the sky, and from here you can press either X for a basic swing. You won't do this. You can press A for a single element discharge using only one file, or you can press X plus A for the ultra element discharge. Furthermore, you can input a direction with this to control where you perform the attack, allowing you to quite literally leap up and then pull off a UAD behind you, which is incredible if the monster moves. This is also mighty handy for those pesky aerial monsters that never want to stay on the ground. So, as you can now see, Charge Blade has some fantastic moves and incredibly powerful offerings. And again, I'll offer some suggestions later for which ones to use. But for now, those are your available Switch skill options. Starting off with your weapon sheath, pressing forward and X will see you draw into the forward slash, the same move you can perform by pressing X plus A with your weapon drawn. Alternatively, pressing ZR with your weapon sheath will allow you to draw directly into axe mode. This action also has a very quick guard point at the start, and that's present irrespective of whether you have morph slash or counter morph slash equipped, but again, more on guard points later. Of course, pressing B will allow you to roll in both axe and sword modes. However, in sword mode specifically, following an attack, you can input left or right with B to sidestep, which is useful for some repositioning. Now, let's talk about sword and shield specific moves first, since this is the foundation of this weapon, and it's where you will charge, store, and line up a lot of the powerful options for axe later on. Pressing X three times consecutively will perform a weak slash, a return stroke into a spinning slash, this is your standard X combo, and the final hit, the Spinning Slash, also ends in a guard point. Just keep this in the back of your mind for now, we'll list them out later. Again, as mentioned, pressing X plus A will allow you to perform the same advancing slash from draw, only now you can do it any time. You can also sub out the first attack from the X combo with an advancing slash by going X plus A, X, X. Alternatively, if you hold down A, you can perform the charged double slash. Make sure you let go at the right time when you see and hear the flash and the sound effect as this move can be overcharged. But this is a great move for charging your files as you can see at the top of the screen. You can also work an X attack in at the end to go from the charged double slash into the spinning slash. This is one nice option for building files pretty quickly. Furthermore, you can hold down A at any point during your X combos to work a charged double slash into the mix. Following an attack, inputting a direction and A will see you perform a sliding slash. This is useful following a combo, either as a means to get out of harm's way or to reposition. 
You can also go straight into a combo following this, and it's also a very useful spacing tool for your amped element discharge or your ultra element discharge, as you'll see later. Plus, it also has a guard point at the end, which is handy. Next up, following an attack, if you press X plus A, you'll perform a shield thrust. You can also add this in at the end of the charge double slash, since it can follow any sword attack. And this specifically, hold A into X plus A, is another one of your great file building moves. Additionally, if your shield is charged, then this move dishes out file damage. So if impact, that's KO potential, or if element, that's more elemental damage. Now, before we cover the next few combos for sword, it's important to understand file storage. In the intro to this video, I explained the fundamentals of files, how you build them, how you store them, and transfer them. So let's cover exactly how you perform those moves. Holding down ZR allows you to guard. Charge Blade has a strong shield, even more so when it's charged. However, whilst guarding, if you then press A, you'll perform this animation. Assuming you have files built up, then this will take that charged glow and fill the files. You can see the glow disappears and the file icons are now full. This is what we refer to as charging, then storing your files. Now that you have these stored, this then allows us to move into the next stage of charge blade play. Following an advancing slash with X plus A, you can press X plus A to perform a shield thrust, and if you then add a third X plus A input onto the end of this, you'll begin winding up the amped element discharge attack. This same movement becomes ultra element discharge if the shield is charged, which we're about to cover. Ordinarily, if you let this animation play out, it will expend a single file in the process, and if your shield is charged, it will use all your files, hence the ultra in the name. But again, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Following this combo, X plus A three times, if you then press ZR, you can cancel the amped element discharge into a round slash, and in doing so, provided your files have been stored, it will then transfer them into the shield, like so. Now your shield glows red, this gives you increased guard capabilities, plus your guard points, which we'll explain soon, will dish out some file damage. And when we move into axe mode, your axe attacks are also more powerful, since the shield becomes the head of the axe. So powered up shield equals powered up axe head. But before that, with your shield charged, you can now charge and store more files, and this is how you line up the ultra element discharge. With a charged shield and full files, performing that same combo will now perform a more powerful ultra element discharge, expending all of your files. It's worth noting, if you want to cancel a UED, we'll use that abbreviation for ultra element discharge, into an AED, amped element discharge, you can simply pull back and press X during the wind-up animation, and this will instead perform the AED, thus only consuming one file. This is useful sometimes if you realize that you've lost your opening and you don't want to waste all of your files. It's also important to note that in order to do this, the back direction is relative to where you're facing. So if you're facing left, back is right. If you're facing forwards, back is back, etc. Now, moving on from there to touch on the specifics of your two switch skills. First up, condensed element slash. There's another component, this weapon, that can be charged, and that's your sword. In order to do this, you don't need files, but you do need a charged shield. Pressing ZR and A, and then holding down X, will perform the condensed element slash. Again, you need to release this at the right time, but doing so will see your sword glow red for a short period of time. This prevents the sword attacks from bouncing and also imbues your sword with file damage relevant to that of your charge blade, impact or element. So it's some added damage ticks during your sword combos. Also keep in mind what I mentioned earlier, you can also shortcut to this off the back of the counter peak performance silk by move by pressing X, assuming you have a shield charged. Alternatively, if you have the spinning slash equipped, that same input will instead take you into spinning axe mode. This does not require files or a charge shield to activate, but since the charge shield improves your axe attacks, you should still aim to have that. During this mode, your axe attacks will now feature an added buzzsaw-like component to them, and holding down the button will see you add more ticks to these spins. Additionally, both your X and A attacks will slowly build files, which is handy since your A attacks consume them by default. And much like with Condensed Spinning Slash, you can also get to this quickly by pressing X off the back of a counter peak performance. However, now that we're talking about Axe Mode, that's the perfect segue to speak about the Axe attacks. Whilst in Sword and Shield Mode, holding down ZR and pressing X will see you morph into Axe Mode. Again, remember that the timing for this morph animation will differ depending on whether you have Morph Slash or Counter Morph Slash, but the inputs are the same. You can also get into Axe Mode another way, Following storing your files with ZR plus A, you can press A again to dive directly into the A combo, which we'll cover in a second. Now, pressing X two times consecutively will perform a rising slash into an overhead slash. This can be looped indefinitely. 
Pushing forward and X will perform a dash slam. This is a powerful overhead attack, and you can then transition directly from this into a combo, so this is a nice opener. Pressing A three times will then perform the element discharge, one, two, and then go into either the amped element discharge or the ultra element discharge, depending on what you have charged, as we've already covered. Keep in mind, these attacks with A will consume files as they dish out file damage in the process. They are strong and should be used, but just keep in mind that they do consume your resources. You can also go forward and X into A and then A to go dash slam into element discharge and then into AED or UED. However, if you don't want to go into either of these moves following an element discharge combo, you can instead go A, A, X, and this will then swap the final attack for a rising slash. You can also go X, A, X, A, repeat, for a nice little mixed combo. And again, if you have spinning slash selected, any of these inputs can be held for more buzzsaw action. If you want to go straight into the powerhouse, the UED or the AED, then pressing X plus A whilst in axe mode will see you initiate that move right away. And of course, as with sword mode, if you press ZR during the wind up animation, you'll again cancel into spinning slash, morph back into sword mode and store your files. Alternatively, you can just press ZR to morph straight back Again, keep in mind that the animation here will differ depending on whether you have Morph Slash or Counter Morph Slash. The first one has a guard point at the end, the second at the beginning. You can also press ZR during pretty much any axe combo to cancel into a morph as well, so keep that in mind. Now, those are your main moves covered, but just before we speak about the guard points, one quick tip. That move we spoke about earlier, the Fade Slash or the Sliding Slash, this is a really useful positioning tool for your UED. Assuming you have an opening and your shield is charged, following storing your files, you can press X to perform a return stroke. It's a nice move, but the purpose here is really just to perform an attack, since following that, you can then pull back and press A to fade slash away. From here, you are at a pretty perfect distance to just go X plus A, X plus A right into UED. And the distance is nicely lined up so that your axe hits the monster perfectly. Just keep in mind that the resulting file explosions happen behind the axe, so try to be mindful of that so that they hit the rest of the body. Sometimes you do want to space a bit further back if you're going for that KO since you want the files to hit the head. But this is a handy move and a very easy spacing tool that you can use early on to sort of gauge your distances. Anyway, with all the moves covered, now it's important to highlight the other fantastic option of this weapon, which are guard points. A guard point, quite simply, is a point during an attack animation where your shield is presented in front of you. If you are hit at this point, even though you're not actively holding down ZR to guard, because your shield is presented, you will guard. If you have a charged shield, this then allows you to expend file damage. Although it is important to note, one change in rise with impact files is that guard points no longer dish out KO damage. Your other attacks do, but your guard points specifically can no longer KO, which is a shame, but uh, such is life. There are a number of guard points, some easier to use than others, so let's go over them. With your weapon sheath, pressing ZR to draw into axe mode has a very quick guard point at the start. This is incredibly quick, so it is quite hard to time, but it's there. This again is present irrespective of your switch skill. In sword mode, holding down ZR and pressing X has a guard point at the beginning of the morph. This is the one that is most commonly used as guard points, as it's a quick input and it's pretty intuitive. It's almost like holding down guard, only with an added button. If you have morph slash by default, this is quicker, but with the counter morph slash, the animation is the same, just slightly longer, giving you a more generous window. Also, keep in mind that for all of these demonstrations, I am not using rapid morph, so you're seeing these with their base timings. You can also space this a little bit by adding an attack at the beginning, then pressing ZR plus X. Exact same placement, but the first attack just gives you a means to time it a little bit easier. When you complete the X combo with three inputs, the spinning slash at the end also has a guard point. This one is out for a bit longer, but there's a little bit of setup and timing to get to it. Same thing goes for pressing X after the charge double slash on A, guard point on the spinning slash. That stylish sliding fade slash you can perform following an attack. This also has a guard point. I'll be honest, this one is one of the trickier ones to land, and more often than not, you'll probably pull this off by accident, but if you slide into something, you can guard point. And then when you're in axe mode, by default with morph slash selected, if you press ZR to morph back into sword mode, this is a generous guard point at the end. It's a little slower to get to, but the added benefit is that the shield is held out for a little longer. So the actual guard point window is pretty nice. Alternatively, if you have counter morph slash equipped, then remember it's in reverse. Your guard point is now at the very start, which makes it much safer in axe mode. Now I mentioned the guard points expend some file damage when you successfully pull them off. However, there's a few extra things to note. 
Following a successful guard point, if you press X plus A, you can transition into an AED or a UED, so this is a fantastic punisher. You firm an incoming attack and dive straight into one of your biggest damage moves. This is one of the most satisfying things to do with this weapon. Alternatively, if you press X following a guard point, you'll morph straight into axe mode, and if you press B, you will then sidestep. Perhaps the guard point didn't lead to an opening, and instead you just want to reposition. Outside of that, you have your other silk by move, the one that you can't change, and that is Morphing Advance. Pressing ZL and X will see you dash across the ground. This move has some iframes, and at the end, you have some options. If you do nothing, it'll simply morph you into Axe. However, if you press X, you can cancel the morph into a Spinning Slash, which again, ends in that guard point. You can also press A to go directly into an Element Discharge 2, the second hit of the A-Axe combo. Or you can press X plus A to go directly into an Ultra Element Discharge or an Amped Element Discharge depending on what you have charged. Furthermore, you can input a direction with this, much like with Axe Hopper, to influence where the attack comes out. So you can dash in one direction and then pull off a 180 and go into an Ultra Element Discharge if you want. So Sword Attacks, Axe Attacks and Guard Points, that is your breakdown of all the available moves for your various modes and stages. So, now that we've covered all the moves, let's talk about some of the recommended combos. Do keep in mind that the combos you use will again vary depending on your opening. Some of your bigger, heavier hitting options are great, but if the time commitment is too large and the opening too small, then they will serve very little value. So, in this section, we'll cover a number of available options for various openings and scenarios. First up, your standard file building combo is hold A for the charge double slash, and following that you can either press X plus A for the shield thrust, or X for the spinning slash. The spinning slash does more damage, and ends in a guard point, but the shield thrust is a little faster. There's not much in it, but I mention both because they both have useful applications. With a charged shield, the shield thrust has some added file damage, meanwhile the spinning slash has the guard point, so you can pick and choose these depending on the opening. Maybe the monster's about to advance on you, you need a guard point, meanwhile maybe you need a quicker file build, you use the shield thrust. Either way, both of these are very quick, also decent damage combos that you can use to both attack and build files. Following on from there, you have your UED. This is hands down one of your biggest damage dealers. Standalone, going X plus A, X plus A, X plus A is a simple combo to get you to UED. And anytime you have an opening, this is a great option for damage. Just keep in mind that you need to be confident with your spacing and your timing. If the monster moves and you waste your files, well, that's less than ideal. Also, if the monster happens to be trapped or down and you want a uh, better position, don't forget that sliding slash spacing tool we spoke about, or alternatively, you can simply morph into axe mode and then just press X plus A. Either way, Ultra Element Discharge is a powerhouse. However, when paired with counter peak performance, the switch skill, this is incredible. You can go from a counter peak performance guard right into a UED, but then, following that, if you're about to be attacked, pulling off another counter peak performance will instantly refill your files, allowing you to spam out another UED. It allows you to play a little bit more recklessly, since getting files is so incredibly easy. Keep in mind as well, that if you have counter morph slash equipped, then you ideally want to be going into your UEDs off the back of a guard point, since the guard point will scale up the damage of the files, so this is a great way to both guard, counter, and go in with a big damage punisher. However, if you want a little bit more spice in your life than just UED Unga Bunga, then you have the Spinning Slash, which has some fantastic damage outputs, as well as file or element status damage too. With this, once in axe mode, holding down A two times, then X allows you to loop your attacks indefinitely. Since these attacks also generate files, you are consistently building the files that the A attacks are consuming. If the monster is down, and you can wail on its head using this, it's a recipe for some incredible damage. And of course, following that, anytime your opening is about to go, you can either morph back, or add in the final A input for a UED finisher. And of course, outside of that, while it's not really a combo, Axe Hopper is fantastic too. It's a very easy way to spam out UEDs in a much more forgiving manner, given the ability to flip and reposition. It's a great option for attacking monsters in the sky. So, as you can see, there's a couple of really cool ways to play with this weapon, and uh, both are definitely viable. So mess around with them, and have some fun. So, now that we've gone through all of the switch skills, moves, and recommended combos, the question remains which switch skills are right for you. Ultimately, the best ones are the ones that you are going to enjoy the most, however, there are some definite picks that I think stand out above the rest. 
In the first slot, I personally run Condensed Spinning Slash. They are both fantastic options, but I really enjoy the playstyle of Spinning Slash, plus it has some fantastic damage potential. The Charge Sword from Element Slash is nice, but since a lot of the time you build your files in Sword Mode, then you either dive into UED or to Axe Mode, then in the grand scheme of things, it's a little less frequently used. So for this slot, Spinning Slash is my pick. That being said, if you happen to be fighting a uh, particularly hard monster, something like a Basarios, there are select cases where taking the Condensed Element Slash can yield benefits for that Mind's Eye. In the second slot, it has to go to Counter Morph Slash. It's just a fantastic option. Not only does it have that nice early guard point from Axe Morph, which is fantastic and synergizes nicely with Spinning Slash, but the fact that the guard points actually amplify your file explosions for both AED and UED, it's just a fantastic skill and too good to pass up. As for the third slot, this one is tough, and honestly both are fantastic. If you want to lean into the UED spam, then Counter Peak Performance is incredible. It fills your files reliably and gives you a super quick transition to UED. It's a very spammable playstyle and has some insane damage potential. However, that being said, being able to launch up into the sky and slap monsters down, dropping huge explosions on their head, it's just too much fun to pass up on. Plus, it does have some genuine utility. As mentioned earlier, if you're fighting our dear friend Rathalos, who thinks the floor is lava, then this is a fantastic way to bring monsters like that down. So, for slot 3, I'd say adjust based on what you're fighting. Regardless, they're all fantastic, but if you want some suggestions, that's what I pick. Now that we've covered all of your moves, the last thing you need to absolutely master this weapon is a good armor set. So when it comes to making your mix sets, here are some armor skills that are definitely worth considering. The first set of skills are skills that, in truth, pretty much all weapons can benefit from, and that's your typical damage focused attack stack. Skills like Attack Boost, Agitator, Peak Performance, Critical Eye, Critical Boost, Weakness Exploit, Latent Power, or even Maximum Might. These are all great attack and affinity boosting skills that can synergize nicely with this weapon. Do however keep in mind that your files cannot crit, so any crit boosting stuff is purely for the weapon attacks, meanwhile your impact files scale off of things like an artillery, an element off of element damage. Outside of that, you definitely want to be using load shells. Load shells level 2 will allow you to max out your files from simply yellow charge, whereas normally you'd need to be red, so it makes building files incredibly quick. Focus also speeds up this process, but honestly with load shells, you really don't need it. Artillery is a must if you're looking to run impact type charge blades as this boosts your file damage, but keep in mind it doesn't apply if you're running elemental charge blades. For that again you need to lean into the relevant element attack boost skill. Fire, ice, water, etc. Rapid Morph is an incredible new skill which rapidly speeds up the morphing animations. Now some people like this, others don't. It's nice, but at the same time when your morphs are fast, it also tightens up your guard point window. What I'd say is if you're learning this weapon and you're learning guard points, perhaps start out without this, then work up to it, but once you get comfortable, Rapid Morph paired with Counter Morph Slash is a very nice combo. Then if you want a little more out of your guard points, the guard skill itself will help reduce the knockback on some of these stronger attacks, allowing you to follow up on more options and offensive guard for that damage boost if you're leaning into the counter playstyle. If you want to lean more into the KO potential of the weapon using impact files, you can also run Slugger, but given that slots on armor skills are more limited in Rise, I would put this on the lower end of the priority list. But outside of that, just grab skills that synergize nicely with your chosen playstyle, and you should be good to go. So now that we've gone over all of the moves, the switch skills, recommended combos, even some armor skill recommendations, now it's time to tie it all together in a quick sample hunt. As always, we are fighting a high rank Rathian, the punching bag for the workshop, an incredibly telegraphed monster, but good for practicing new techniques. And in this section, I'm just going to cut together a few clips from this hunt to try and sort of show you everything we've spoken about all tied together. So to begin with, we're going to run up to Rathian and we're going to make use of the counter peak performance right at the gate to basically get full files off the back of the raw. Obviously you can't go into an SAED from this, but you can have full files, which means right at the beginning we already have a charged file. And because I'm running load shells, this particular setup is sort of a sleep charge blade build, so it's not like hugely damage focused, it's more sort of a sleep and artillery, but it does have load shells in, so it means anytime I'm yellow I can very quickly uh, fill up my files. A couple of miss moves there, but you can sort of see that we're now in position to basically be able to go and follow up with, uh, you know, guard point there, which did protect me. Because I don't have guard, I wasn't able to follow up from there. However, now that counter peak performance is back, I'm able to follow up. And keep in mind, because this is an impact charge blade, the explosion, the file explosion, goes out in a straight line. So even though the axe attack missed, the actual impact files hit, which basically allowed me to get that KO. 
You can also take note of that uh, backward slide, the sort of fade slash, which we use to sort of position the uh, SAD or the UED, should I say, much better. And again, because I've got low shells, I was able to get some hits in before Rathian fell asleep so that I've got full files again. And now that I'm in a sort of stationary position, just switching to axe mode is a much easier way to basically space out the uh, UED. So you can see right in a very short space of time, because of counter peak performance, I was able to get one off the back of the silk bind, then a more traditional one just with the uh, fade slash positioning, and then another one when uh, Rathian fell asleep, and then a fourth one there. So uh, counter peak performance, assuming you can kind of read the monster correctly, is a great way to spam these out. Jumping forward to the next clip, again, you know, for this one, it's a, it's a good chance to sort of read Rathian's uh, very obvious jump up in the sky at tail swipe. Again, nice positioning. Do keep in mind, this one is uh, not always, you know, I got kind of lucky there, got knocked out of the sky and got paralyzed, of course, but you do want to be careful with that one because it's not always a perfect position to follow up with a UED because Rathian sometimes does the double move and then moves out the way. So you know you need to kind of sort of keep that in mind. But in this situation, I opted to basically go into the Savage Slash. It won't always be like a perfect opening. And in that situation, probably were better options. But I wanted to sort of focus on demonstrating that, you know, in situations where the monster is locked down, this is another thing you can lean into. If you don't necessarily have full files or you don't necessarily have the position to sort of go back and go into your UED, you can similarly just go into the sort of Savage Spinning Slash and just use that one instead. Next up, jump forward again. This is sort of a good situation to demonstrate the use of cancelling into just an amped element discharge because you'll notice that in that situation, it's perfect for sniping the head. If you had done a regular UED, you probably would have missed a lot of it. But just pulling back and getting that quick AED out is a nice way to often just pull off a KO and it kind of snipes heads very nicely. And again, because it's on the floor, it's KO'd. Very nice position to then go into the spinning slash again for uh, some more damage. And keep in mind, if you want to maintain spinning slash and you're about to be hit, don't forget to use your other silk by move because that will keep you in axe mode and maintain savage axe mode or spinning slash, should I say. And, uh, you know, it's just a useful thing to keep in mind. But for the most part, that is pretty much it. Just going to round out with another sort of clip for you guys to watch. But that is it for the Charge Blade Workshop. I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then a like would be super appreciated. As mentioned, a ton of research does go into these. But of course, if I did miss anything or there's anything I forgot to mention, then by all means, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, be sure to keep it locked for plenty more. If you want to catch more from us at Arex Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 Paradise Central and Vestmore streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.